Yo guys, punk out another video. This video is 35 minutes long, so strap in and get ready for the ride. This one's going to be my personalized guide on picking a class for Classic WoW. I've seen a lot of YouTubers cover this topic from a class design perspective. Some of them just give you average GPS numbers and raid logs and basically just rank them. And less so from an experienced perspective or covering some of the underlying nuance for each class. I've played every single class in vanilla pretty extensively except for maybe Shaman and I have a great deal of insight to lay out for you guys which I think should help a lot when it comes to picking a class. So without further ado, let's get into it fellas. So let's start off with rogues. Since it's vanilla after all. So you want to be a rogue eh? Rogues are by far the most popular class in vanilla. Every vanilla server I've ever played on has had an absolute abundance of rogues. If you plan on PvEing specifically, rogues have pretty staggering pros and cons. The first thing which I mentioned is that they're going to be, there's going to be rogues all over the place. This means guilds are almost never going to be openly recruiting you. Generally, there's only about 2-5 to five rogues per 40 man raid group. Sometimes higher in early patches or in horde sign it can go up to like 7-8, but not, not generally the case since melee groups uh, need to have a battle shout from warriors, uh, shamans for wind fear on horde side, or hunter for true shot aura. So it gets kind of hard to get into a guild. And the competition level to get that rogue spot is really high, as well as tons of competition for melee loot between both melee groups. On the other hand, rogues can also be really fun in vanilla PvE. Some of you guys may disagree with this point, but I think that rogue, the rogue DPS rotation happens to be slightly more interactive than some of the other classes. Having a strong sense for your combo points and how to optimize them, as well as when to pop certain CDs like Adrenaline Rush, Blade Flurry, etc. in certain scenarios at hand, it makes it so that a good rogue can outperform lower skilled players purely from a tactical timing perspective. Rogues are also an extremely strong DPS class in general, with straightforward mechanics. If you want to be competitive on the DPS ladder throughout each content patch, rogues will abide. With that being said, rogues are pretty trivial as a class in raiding, so you don't really have much responsibility to do other than focusing on uptime on targets and smashing your peen into robots. I mean, if you plan on raid leading, I wouldn't say Rogue is the best class to pick as your main. Who said Thunder Fury? <laughs> no, listen, okay, listen guys. Not happening. Here's the deal. 99% of you aspiring Rogues won't get this item. Period. Any sensible raiding guild will almost always prioritize the main tank over a Rogue for Thunder Fury. That leaves you on second or third tier prior for it. And even then, you're probably still not that guy in the guild who's going to get it. I mean, some people might make their own guild as a rogue and raid lead and just take it because they're that kind of person. But generally and speaking, like in a general sense, you're not getting this item. So I really wouldn't pick a class based on a legendary item unless you're making your own guild or you know you're going to no life it and be that guy in a guild or, you know, unless you know that you're dedicating yourself to it, I wouldn't pick a class based on that. All right, so PvP for a rogue? Yes. Just yes. Do it. Unless you're trash at WoW, then no, don't do it. If you're above the median IQ level with a great ability to adapt and play video games at an add up level, yes, do it. World PvP on a rogue is insanely fun. Vanilla is filled with tons of rats crawling all over the place, funneling through choke points all over the open world. There's endless opportunity for you to bathe in salty tears throughout the world. Rogues with engineering have insane 2v1, 3v1, and 4v1 potential. I played a ton of world PvP on a rogue on Warsong with Goblin Rocket Helm and Silithus in particular with level 60s farming pages, and I can't even express to you how many times I 3v1, 4v1 teams of casual scum all over the open world. Sap one, blind the other, Rocket Helm another, kill one by one with, you know, outplays as the fight progresses. If you're legendary at PvP, you know, you're a PvP god, you've been one for a long time, Rogue will be the most satisfying world PvP class by far, especially considering you can almost always dictate when the fight starts and just sit in stealth awaiting your opportunity. As for leveling up, rogues do a damn good job without having to worry about mana and just having consistent damage and utility. They're great levelers, so don't worry about that. Rogues are good levelers. Warriors, the tank of vanilla. So here we go. Warriors are a really strong class in vanilla. Every raid has generally 7 to 10 warriors, so about the two groups of warriors entirely. Most raids will have at least three to four tanks. Sometimes you'll have a Pharaoh Druid off tank, but honestly, that's super rare and not even worth it. Most guilds will have straight warrior tanks the whole way. Fury Warriors are also a top tier DPS class, especially in later patches, which means raids are generally littered with brown warrior goodness all over the place. Here's the deal. Warriors, especially tank warriors, are probably the hardest class to be good at in vanilla PvE. 
Being a strong warrior main tank is very micro intensive and requires a good amount of confidence. I've tanked for 10 years now, in vanilla specifically, and I've fully cleared all content in vanilla as a tank many, many times. I also have a video on this if, where I go over some tips and tricks for warrior tanking vanilla if you guys want to check it out. Over my years of experience, I've seen so many cruddy warriors fail to adapt and control their environment. Mechanics tend to be the biggest problem I've seen. Trailing very closely behind that notion, however, or maybe even tied or ahead of it, is a general lack of confidence from your main tank or tank. People who second guess themselves, break under pressure when things get hectic, don't have the ability to adapt or react in crucial scenarios, should not, I repeat, should not play a vanilla warrior tank. Also, warriors with their heavy stance dancing, spammable rotation, one ability every global plus off global abilities will make your fingers tired. I'm not kidding. I literally have issues with carpal tunnel syndrome from playing warrior intensely over the years. So if you want something more relaxed on your fingers, don't bother with it. Being a warrior tank also requires absolute dedication to your raiding group. You're expected to be there every single night, every single night. Tanks that ghost uh, are a guild's mortal enemy. So if you aren't ready to dedicate to raid progress consistently in a long-term scenario, don't do that to a guild. They'll funnel gear into you, you'll quit or stop showing up consistently, and they'll have to re-gear another, another tank and start from scratch entirely, which will really hurt that guild. Fury Warriors are awesome. In the early days, Fury starts off pretty slow. Without a good amount of crit and hit, you're pretty much a soggy noodle. But once you hit a soft cap on your hit rating and hit that threshold on your crit rating, you become fully erect. The increased hit will allow you to miss less, which will generate more rage, and the crits will also give you increased rage because critical strikes generate more rage. Once you hit a certain threshold, you become an absolute legend. Fury Warriors, arguably similar to Rogues, have one of the most fun DPS rotations in the game. Bloodthirst, Whirlwind, using Heroic Strike when above 70, Rage, or Cleave with multi-target, Deathwish has a big pop, and surprisingly enough, Fury, Fury Warriors spec into improve Overpower, which means whenever the target dodges one of your uh, abilities or auto attacks, and you have low rage, you swap over to battle stance, overpower, and then go back to berserker stance. Make sure not to switch, however, over to battle stance uh, for an overpower if you're uh, off CD on your strikes, or if you have a full rage bar in berserker, because that's just dumb. I'd also suggest getting SCT or SCTD uh, scrolling combat text add-on for overpower warnings instead of having to watch for dodges all day. Fury Warriors are quite trivial. The biggest thing you might have to do is put on tank gear on certain pulls and off tank a target. Tank warriors, on the other hand, obviously are the ideal raid leader. So you lead the pace of the pulls, and while tanking mobs uncomfortable, you're basically just standing in one spot tanking your mobs, and you have a full overview over the entire raid in order to micromanage all the little peons in your raid group. Adept WoW players with strong character and leadership abilities will excel on a warrior tank, and if you fill this role well, expect tons of perks within the social dynamic of a classic WoW server. You're the hot commodity. Everyone wants your juice. You'll be beating off the ladies with a club by the end of it. Did someone say Thunder Fury? Wait, no. Thunder Fury. Yes, be the main tank and this item is generally yours on first prio if you deserve it. Fury Warriors, not so much. You'll be second, third tier like rogues. Also, Hand of Ragnaros, Might of Manifil, Corrupted Ashbringer are all up for grabs as a warrior if you want to PvP as arms. For PvP in general, warriors are the kings of premades. Warriors with paladins following them, giving them freedom, or shaman with wind fury on horde side, free action potions on both uh, on both factions, followed by heal bots, y you can absolutely dominate in the PvP scene. Arms warriors are the kings of pre-made. I repeat, the kings. Get a bunch of consumables, a couple heal bots, and two-shot everyone in your path to easy five caps and AB all day. Again, if you're adept at warrior PvP, I repeat, the kings of pre-mades. As for leveling on a warrior, very slow by yourself. You basically need a heal, heal bot to level up with you as a warrior in order to have a decent leveling time. But with a healer, you can take advantage of AoE pulls with endless rage and level quite fast. Ah, mages. Mage is the first class I ever played in WoW. The first class I ever hit 2k on in TBC. Oh, how I love mages. To be honest though, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with mages in vanilla between PvE and PvP. In terms of PvE, mages are one of the most valued classes in the game. From their great ability to AoE, kite, decurse, keep max range, and just the amount of damage they do, they're just so great and versatile. There's generally tons of mages in every raid, anywhere from 5 to 7 mages generally. Uh, in every classic raid, 
there's usually two full caster groups, so 10 raid slots dedicated to mages and warlocks. This means two things. The first thing is that finding a raid spot as a mage is generally quite easy. They aren't super popular um, compared to some classes. I mean, they're not unpopular, but nowhere near the popularity of rogues and fury warriors, which are everywhere like a cockroach infestation. Most vanilla guilds are always, always, always recruiting mages and warlocks. On the other hand though, seeing as there's 10 casters in every single raid, it's pretty difficult to gear out, especially if you aren't high prio in the guild's plan for gear distribution. I know a lot of people like to say, oh, but raiding isn't about the loot, it's about the experience. Okay, sure, but also, no, give me the purples. I view that aspect as a pretty strong negative, honestly. But it's probably not the biggest negative. The biggest negative for mages in PvE is by far the damage rotation. So, in early days, mages play Frost. In either Deep Frost or Arcane Frost. Deep Frost is possibly the most boring attack rotation in the game. You literally cast one spell over and over again. Frostbolt! 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 It's so boring. As Arcane Frost, you at least time Arcane Power with uh, Double Frostbolt combos with Presence of Mind, but nonetheless, still pretty much the same thing and super boring. When you get into AQ40 and Nax, you go Fire, which is better, and I mean a lot of Normie Mages will say, but Punkrath, a Fire Mage is basically spam Fireball. And no, no, that's wrong. I played Mage in AQ40 and full Nax clears for a while, and I was one of the more innovative slash tryhard mages that broke the mold entirely. So Fire Mages have Ignite, which is a dot that applies itself on the target every time you crit. Ignite damage is based off the spell damage of the initial Ignite proc or the spell that proc the initial ignite. So if you get a crit with a scorch, it'll be a percent damage on the ignite based on the scorch damage. So it's not gonna be super high, which isn't worth it at all. So when you get a crit with scorch and you get an ignite based off scorch damage, you generally don't wanna feed that ignite and you wanna let it fall off. And then once you get a fireball crit, for a real big ignite, that's when you push that ignite super far, stacking it up to five and trying to keep it for as long as you can. So if you look at this talent right over here, you'll see that Fire Blast and Scorch have a 4% extra increased critical strike rating than all your other fire spells. This means one thing. So once you get a crit with your Fireball, you get a big Ignite. And then once you have that big Ignite, you then follow up with Scorches and Fire Blast combos. You, you could use rank one if it's a long fight and you wanna conserve your mana in order to keep that Ignite going for as long as possible. So you can also get greedy and use high rank Scorch and Fireball if you really want, you know, spamming demonic runes and stuff that'll keep you going. It's doable with good gear and tons of consumables, but it's kind of for tryhards only. So with that being said, Fire Mage is pretty interesting. It's got a cool rotation, but there's a caveat. Um, Ignite is shared between all mages in a raid. This means there's only one Ignite and all mages feed into that Ignite. So this means the first mage to crit starts the Ignite and gets all of the damage. So the rest of the mages are just feeding into that one mage's ignite. This means that all the threat and all the damage goes to that one mage who started that ignite chain. So you need to understand how to control that threat, of course, and also it's kind of annoying to not have your own personal attack rotation, but have a class-wide attack rotation where one mage gets all the damage and the rest are just coordinating in order to cast low rank scorches and fire blasts to keep that ignite going. So on Lothab, for example, where everyone has max crit and you don't pull threat, you'll have the best geared mage with the most spell power cast a big pyroblast with his trinket. You'll get a massive crit with that pyroblast and then all the other mages are just pumping that pyroblast ignite the entire time. Um, you, then you just keep repeating the process. This is what the damage meter will end up looking like. It's, it's not my favorite. Mages in PvP, what can I say? One of the most fun and versatile classes in the game. You do everything. Control, 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 control. There was this sick mage on Warsong who used to upload montages of how he played in Warsong Gulch pre-mage. I'm not sure if I could find the clip. Um, and he would literally barely do any damage. He would just improve Blizzard for 70% slow AoE, sheep multiple targets, sheep one after another, rank one frost bolts, all kinds of different targets, and just have the deepest impact on the game w without doing damage pretty much. Aside from that, you can also pretty much two-shot anyone, and I mean, you don't really gotta say much more after that. Just check out Vert Vertna's uh, video from Original Vanilla, enough said. And if you haven't seen that video, go back to history class. What are you doing watching this video? 
As for leveling, mages are super fast at leveling with improved blizzard, 70% slow, endless AoE pack pulls. I mean, six you get the 60 in some of the fastest times. So paladins. Paladins are the core of raid healing in vanilla on alliance side. Paladins are by far the best vanilla healers in the game due to this talent right here where when they get a crit heal, they get a 100% mana refund on that casted spell. When they scale into full crit healing gear, they become rank 1 flash healing bots, never going out of mana, literally spamming flash the entirety of a fight. The way you heal as a paladin is you'll generally have about three different ranks of flash on your bars. So rank one is generally your filler heal that you're just constantly spamming. You'll have a mid rank, like three or four, depending on what your gear is, that you use every now and then when things are a bit heavier. And if things get really panicky, you'll use max rank flash to recoup, 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 get everyone back up during a rough time and then revert back to lower ranks. So you could also cast big holy lights uh, every now and then when the main tank uh, is, is quite low if you time it properly to top him off, but pretty rarely. You're pretty much casting flash rank one the entire fight. It's pretty boring to just spam flash the whole time. I mean, similar to mages where you're just frost bolting the whole time, but it's healing. So you're pretty much just adapting and reacting to health bars, which is fun regardless of what's whatever spell you're using, right, I guess. Uh, another annoying part about playing a paladin is paladin buffs. You're constantly coordinating through pally power who's doing what buff, so you're just constantly rebuffing targets all the time. It's super annoying. Red paladins are almost non-existent in vanilla raids. They do exist more after AQ40 Avenger set, and other items hit the game, but honestly, they require so many little things to even be viable in a PvE scenario that most people will not be able to successfully raid on them. Paladins need to farm all kinds of little spell power consumables, melee consumables, dragon's breath, chili, on hit effects. I mean, in order to be a top performing rep paladin, you need to try so damn hard. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it unless that's what you want to make your vanilla identity and you're just determined to make it work. Then, yeah, you know, knock yourself out. But uh, it'll, it'll be pretty hard for you to find a raid spot or get high prio on good loot, apart from two-handers, of course, because most DPS warriors are dual-wielding, especially in later uh, patches. There's a Fury two-hander spec early on, but it doesn't last super long. But as a rep paladin, you really need to, like, be on that next level if you expect to get a raid spot. It's going to be really tough. Rep paladins are strong in PvP in general. Whether you're playing a rep paladin, fully consumed, cleaving alongside a warrior and pre-maids, uh, you're playing Holy Paladin, heal botting, flag carrying, helping the flag carrier freedoms, etc. Or a Shockadin running around blasting dudes as a semi-prot, semi-holy, semi-ret style paladin doing pretty much everything. I mean, you're always viable in PvP. There's always a nice place for you in the group. Although, it's probably not the most dynamic class in terms of outplay potential, so it can be pretty frustrating if you're more of a methodical rogue mage type PvP player. I don't personally enjoy paladins in PvP, but some people love it, so uh, you might like it. As for leveling, paladins are pretty average, not good, not great. They get the job done. Warlocks. Uh, I'm kind of indifferent on warlocks in vanilla. Let's go over the pros and cons real quick. So. Early on, Warlocks can't really compete with mages in DPS until late AQ40, Nax. Warlocks are pretty weak in the early days. I mean, they're not really bad, but they won't compete with rogues, furies, and mages in the early tiers of raiding. A big reason for this is the debuff cap on targets. You can only use 16 debuffs on a target uh, at once in raids. This means no corruption, no immolate, no curse of agony at all for the most part. Warlocks generally go sack... Uh, or like SM Ruin type specs, or something along those lines. There's a couple different specs that you can run, you end up pretty much just spamming Shadow Bolt over and over again. It's pretty boring. Um, and another reason why they're pretty bad early and later on is just the way that their talents uh, scale with spell power and the percentages that are applied to spell power. So you're not going to be doing much damage until later on. Um, you have a slight usefulness in, in, in raids in terms of utility with banishing and sometimes fearing, you know, if it makes sense, sometimes you can literally save the raid from wiping or your group from wiping with a good howl. Um, warlocks also have Hellfire, so during gauntlets and big AoE pulls, Warlocks can all just spam Hellfire, nuking themselves. But uh, if you have healers that are just spamming pre-heals on all the Warlocks, they can just endlessly Hellfire and just poop all over all the whelps in suppression room or gauntlet, you know, whelps in, in uh, onyxia or whatever. Warlocks are pretty cool, but I'm not crazy about them, and, you know, that's just my opinion. Warlocks in PvP, they're really immobile, but honestly, 
They're so freaking strong in 1v1s and in pre-mades. You can run Destro, Seduce targets, Soul Fire them, Seduce again, Shadow Bolt, Death Coil, Fear, um, Immolate, Conflag. Like, you can basically kill most classes without them being even able to control their character or fight back at all. You basically almost always have a health stone, so you can heal yourself for 1400 on demand in 1v1s. Uh, quick summon a Voidwalker with Feldom, sack the Voidwalker, get a big shield. Overall, they're just super annoying and it's almost a hundred percent impossible to beat a warlock uh, who has his cds as a mage you have to play it perfectly and even then the warlock has to either really screw up or just suck i mean they are mobile but they more than make up for it in terms of utility flat health healing warlocks are sick in pvp and um as for leveling similarly similarly to hunters uh, Warlocks level quite fast with pet tanking, mana tapping, and then the healing potential to drain and just keep going. They're really fast levelers. Priests are sick. Not necessarily the absolute top performers overall, but quite competitive. And definitely really satisfying to play with a great skill set. So, most priests, or about 95% of priests in raids, will be holy specced. Holy healing is really fun. Priests have bubbles, renew, different flash heal ranks, like paladins, greater heals, and base heal. Um, all of these spells are viable. You don't just spam one ability over and over again for most of the fight. It's really a healing class of intuition, where you use whichever heal you feel necessary depending on the scenario. Priests are great at raid healing and great at tank healing as well, with re renew upkeep, big heals, armor passive on main tank, bubble when tanks uh, are about to die, like reactively you just bubble them and save them from the next hit. Overall, my favorite class to heal on in vanilla raids. Generally, there's equal amounts of priests and paladins within a raid composition, so there's definitely um, going to be a good amount of recruitment for the class specifically. Um, finding a guild is pretty easy as a holy priest, but even better on alliance side, dwarf priests are the only ones in the game who have access to a special ability called Fear Ward, which is a buff that you can give uh, on a target, making them immune to the next fear casted on them. Onyxia, Nefaria, and other bosses have fears on a time interval. Um, having a priest to use Fear Ward on the main tank every time it's up is super important in vanilla. It's not necessary if your tank is good and can uh, time his stance dancing into Berserker, uh, berserker sense for a quick berserker rage on every fear but sometimes the timing is shorter on the fear than the cooldown on your berserker and you literally need the fear ward um to compensate for like mistakes or whatever and it just helps to take some stress off the main tank to not have to stand stance for every single fear um dwarf priests again uh, are the only ones with this ability so finding a guild as a dwarf priest is so damn easy if you want to be casual you'd still find a guild willing to take you without putting in super amount of effort uh, dwarf Priest. I repeat, Dwarf Priest. Shadow Priests are kind of rare. They aren't a great DPS class. They run Oom um really, really fast, and they don't really scale well with spell power and uh, spell crit, particularly, uh, since their dots don't crit in vanilla. Um, nonetheless, every 40-man raid could benefit from one Shadow Priest, but that's really it. One Shadow Priest only. A properly geared Shadow Priest with full consumes, endless mana pods, demonic runes, could not go oom um every two seconds and do decent damage, like middle of the pack damage, um, but nothing special. The DPS rotation for Shadow Priest is actually super fun. Uh, you keep your dot up, you keep embrace up, mind blast, and when mind blast is on cooldown, you fill in two mind flays and then mind blast again. Um, it's pretty fun compared to most classes. I would recommend doing it if you want to be a unique unicorn. You'll definitely have a good time. For PvP, Holy Priests are kind of middle of the pack. They're all right, kind of squishy and immobile. Um, Shadow Priests, on the other hand, are one of the most powerful PvP classes in the game, period. Shadow Form reduces melee damage taken by 15%. This, along with Inner Fire, makes Shadow Priests very tanky against any sort of melee damage. Dots, Fears, uh, Dispel, Offensive Dispel, the ability to off-heal, heal themselves. It's just they, they have a great toolkit for PvP. Um, there's a cheesy pre-made comp where you can stack a bunch of Shadow Priests, dot everything, um, and then if one priest gets focused, the other priests heal that priest, and it, it's just this super cheesy comp where you just spread Shadow Word pains everywhere and watch everything rot. Um, Shadow Priests are tier 1 in PvP, absolute tier 1, I'd recommend it. Um, as for leveling, priests are surprisingly very fast levelers with improved damage on their wands and the talent tree. You dot wand 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 kill dot wand 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 and just keep going mob after mob after mob without breaking for mana for a good while slow steady wins the race i've seen priests level in very very fast times shamans are super cool 
I'm not really experienced on shamans in vanilla, but I've rated enough to know a lot about them and I have played them a little bit. So overall, they're really strong healers. I wouldn't put them on the same exact level as paladins, but they're basically right up there. Uh, the only downfall that they have in comparison to paladins is their lack of mana efficiency. Nonetheless, they more than make up for it with their awesome skill set for healing. Lesser healing wave is their flash heal essentially, so you down to mid to max rank it, just like paladins and priests. And they also have greater healing wave, which is the tank heal, I guess. Um, and obviously what makes them insanely valuable is their ability to raid heal, so chain heal. It's one of the most satisfying healing spells in the game. Chain healing the melee group is a super strong asset to a raid. Uh, that alongside with giving Wind Fury Totem to the melee group, shamans make melee way more valuable on Horde side than Alliance, especially in the early days. L later on, Alliance melee catches up a little bit because Might, Kings, and Salve uh, from the Paladin scales pretty well uh, once stats start to get inflated with stronger gear in later patches. But in early e early days though, Wind Fury is king for sure. They also have Mana Tide Totem, which is a really useful group-wide mana regen cooldown. Between totem management, a healthy heal skill set for different scenarios shamans are a really fun class to raid heal on a uh, really satisfying class to play in general elemental shams and enhancement shamans do not exist in pve i won't even go there they go oom in two seconds and it just doesn't work don't even try it with that said elemental shamans enhancement shamans and resto are all super viable in pvp however so elemental shamans are t a tier one caster for sure in pvp if you get a strong la set with tons of crit you're a damn sentinel turret, blasting fools with major crit combos. Lightning bolt into a quick chain lightning cast with a shock on the end of it, boom, dead. Grounding totem, shock interrupts, overall tier one. Disgusting if you have a high crit set. Enhance is the more uh, known uh, spec by the wider public for vanilla PvP, but honestly, it's not that great. You're basically this immobile melee class with zero gap closing abilities. Um, you completely rely on RNG and your procs for Wind Fury. It's quite good if you have way better gear than everyone else, but in a normal competitive scenario, it's pretty weak. Nonetheless, it is fun, but by no means is tier one. I wouldn't even classify it as tier two. I'd probably say third tier if anything and it gets pretty old after after a while just spamming storm strike and shocks hoping for wind fury procs uh resto shamans are pretty cool you're basically a heal bot shock bot wind fury bot uh following a strong warrior around nothing else to say really it's all right in pvp it's pretty fun and uh as for leveling eh, shamans kind of suck to be honest but again like paladins they get the job done Druids are one of the more versatile classes in vanilla. They aren't top tier at anything in PvE per se, but despite that fact, they can do everything viably or at least semi-viably. Resto Druids are quite weak early on. They go oom pretty fast, even with Innervate, and they don't pump out the strongest heals, and overall just aren't great because of how mana expensive their instant casts are. You can't just blindly rejuve everything and swift mend and regrowth. I mean, you'll go oom really fast. Generally, you'll be upkeeping rejuve on the main tank if necessary and spamming lower rank healing touch over and over again. So in Nax, Druid healing becomes much better with access to this item. It's called Idol of Longevity, which refunds 25 mana on every healing touch cast. Uh, which allows druids to become way more mana efficient while down ranking as you see i can pretty much spam healing touch rank three and my mana basically doesn't even dip if i use rank four it dips a little bit only slightly and you can see how a druid could sustain a really long fight with mana pots and innervate uh, using this idol feral druids and boomkins are similar to shadow priests in that a raid would generally if they wanted only use one so feral druids with the right gear and experience can be middle of the pack dps as well as provide a three percent melee crit buff to the entire melee group so if the druid is substantially good uh, at what he does and pulls decent numbers you can benefit from the raid buff boomkins are similar with a three percent spell crit buff for the caster group but less viable in terms of dps because they go oom super fast but still though it can work if the player is really try hard as all the requisite gear and consumes every single night to make it work um feral tanks are somewhat viable off tanks but honestly you don't see them much and i wouldn't even bother with them in later raid tiers like early it, it's okay but later on it's just not worth it generally you'll only see about two to three druids per 40 man raid composition so there aren't but at the same time they aren't very popular in vanilla in general so even with that you'll most likely be able to find a raid spot relatively easily in pvp druids are one of the most enjoyable classes to play at least in my opinion playing a feral slash resto hybrid spec is super fun you're essentially a troll in pvp with all the little engineering knickknacks consumables like free action potion you're so hard to keep up with infinitely kiting fools like headless chickens running around 
So I made a PvP video called uh, So You Want to Be a PvP God in WoW Classic. Um, and if you guys want to see more detail on like flag carrying and stuff, I covered it a little bit there so you can check it out. But Druids are great healers in PvP. The best flag carriers and feral hybrids are great in 1v1s with the ability to dot targets, gap close, stun, interrupt with bear charge, heal, pretty much they do everything. Lots of fun to play. I'd highly recommend it and they are the kings of Warsong Gulch. Um, as for leveling, druids are pretty fast levelers in cat form. I've seen druids get the 60 in some really impressive times. Alright, so hunters. Hunter is actually the class that I'm going to be playing in official Classic WoW for a multitude of reasons. I'll go through them right now, um, and you might actually be in the same boat as me and make a similar decision. So, hunters aren't top tier in pretty much anything related to damage in vanilla, but they greatly make up for their lack of damage in so many other ways. They have an incredibly useful skill set which makes them absolutely necessary in most raid comps. Hunters have an ability called Distracting Shot. It's essentially a 30 yard taunt. It allows you to shoot a shot onto your target and distract it making it attack you so you can pull it off your pet or pull it off a raid member. Um, you can then use Aspect of the Cheetah and Kite said mob with a 30% increased movement speed all over the place uh, in a raid. So whenever uh, you're on a trash fight or a raid fight, when a mob needs to be kited, it's the hunter's job to kite that bad boy to Africa and beyond, never being touched and endlessly kiting a route until uh, being told to bring the mob back. You can also save healers who get healing aggro by range taunting with distracting shot and bringing the mob back to the tanks. You also have an AoE Frost Slow Trap that you can place on the ground, which is super useful for AoE packs while the casters are just blasting them down, keeping them slowed and kiting around in the trap. You have uh, Trank Shot or Tranquilizing Shot, uh, where you tranquilize a boss with a Soft Enrage uh, that can be neutralized. And overall, you just have responsibilities in raids, which makes the game a lot more interactive and satisfying, I find. So, for example, one of my favorite things to do in vanilla on a hunter, uh, which requires a good amount of skill, it's actually pretty tough, um, is kiting the zombies on Gluth in Nax. So, most hunters are way too bad in order to do this properly. So a good hunter who can execute on this consistently without failure is always a key asset to a raid. The next thing is hunters have a really satisfying attack rotation. You're constantly timing your auto attack timer with your aim shot uh, cast and um, lining up specific abilities depending on uh, mana usage within, within the timer as well. Some people don't like the attack rotation, but I absolutely adore it. And it's a big reason why I'll be playing uh, Hunter in, in Raids in Vanilla. The next major reason why I'll be playing Hunter is because I don't have time to dedicate to playing WoW as much as I used to. I'm going to be quite casual. And with that being said, Hunters level fast with a lower level of effort. And the main reason, the main main reason why I'll be rolling Hunter is they have almost no competition for loot in most raids. You're in a 40 man raid where you're the only attack power based male user. The Hunter tier that drops is split between two or three Hunters in the entire raid and the rest of the off pieces the, at least the hunter specific ones no one no one wants so gearing out is really really easy compared to most everyone else in in the raid uh, i played a 60 hunter on nostalrius back then and i got my hunter gear and tier 2 equivalent gear in two weeks since i joined the guild boom i was decked and ready to wreck in pvp hunters aren't top tier in terms of killing ability but you can 1v1 most classes despite that fact your damage is slightly lackluster unless the target is a mage or you can just two shot them, but good mages can win nonetheless. But with that being said, hunters are still really good in PvP. You have mana drain, which is super broken against certain classes. You can just kite and mana drain them, and then eventually when they're out of mana, just win the fight. You can scatter trap uh, into aim shot, multi shot combos, or scatter trap healer, kill, kill target, feign death, wing clip, counter strike uh, with Mong a mongoose strike, raptor strike, concussive shot, and concussive shot also in PvP spec as a 4% uh, or a 4 second stun. I forget exactly what the percentage, maybe 10%. Um, it's a super dynamic class, high skill ceiling in PvP, um, and I've recently fell in love with it uh, playing on the vanilla server that I'm currently playing on. I'm having more fun on Hunter PvP than anything else I've played in vanilla, to be completely honest. As for leveling, hunters are probably the best alongside mages for leveling. Your pet tanks everything, super consistent, uh, don't need to drink much. You just keep going mob after mob after mob. Joanna knows what's up. Woo! 
that was a long one. I had a massive headache by the end of that 6,000 word essay and then recording it like a motor mouth. If you stuck through the whole video, you're a real trooper. A real trooper. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please comment, like, and subscribe for more of this kind of content. And with that said, have a good one, guys. I'll see you on the next one. I ain't a winner. Pay the front line. Take the don'ts. He's coming out again for a new point. Get your bets down, ladies and gentlemen. Four fours to point. Mark four. Ace, two, scrap, one, 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 four. Scrap, one, four. Who wants the, who wants the hard four?